Okay, so uh, when we talk about quadratic equations, uh, you must know that these equations are in form of a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. Now, for a quadratic equation, the highest power, the highest exponent, or you can call it the highest degree, must be two. In the case you have ax, and this is to the power of three, that is not a quadratic equation. If it is to the power of one, then that is not a quadratic equation. So a quadratic equation must have the highest degree as two. Then also in a quadratic equation, A, B, and C are constants. Then also, a cannot be zero because when this a is a zero, then it implies that we will not have x squared. Instead, we are going to remain with bx plus c. And this one will not be a quadratic equation. So for it to qualify to be a quadratic equation, this a cannot be equal to zero. Okay, then that is what we call a quadratic equation. Now we are going to solve quadratic equations, but to understand well how we are going to solve these quadratic equations, I want to first take you back to your practical classes, primary classes. Remember that the product of any number and zero, it is zero. For instance, if I have two times zero, I must get zero. Is that okay? Okay. Also, if I have, let's say, negative six times zero, I must get zero. And even if I, let's say I have zero times negative seven, I must get zero. This implies that any number times zero, I get zero. Now, similarly, in algebra, in algebra, if two factors, let's say P and Q, are such that P times Q is equal to zero. If I say that P times Q is equal to zero, then this means that maybe, it means that maybe P is equal to zero, or Q is equal to zero. Because if P times Q equals zero, to get this zero, it implies that maybe Q is equal to zero, say that P times zero will equal to zero. It implies that maybe P it is zero, say that zero times Q, I can get zero. All both P and Q are equal to zero. So maybe this 
P is zero and Q is zero such that zero times zero equals zero. I hope that when you know it, you learned about multiplication already. Now, we are going to use this principle to solve quadratic equations that are in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Let's see how to solve quadratic equations using factorization. Solving quadratic equations in one variable by using factorization. Okay. Let's say that in our example one, we have got solve each of the following equations. Solve each of the following equations. Okay, so let's have a number, let's have part A. We have X into X minus one equals zero. And let's have part B as two X into X plus one equals zero. Let's also have part C as X minus two into X plus three equals zero. And let's have part D as two X minus three into three X plus five equals zero. So let us first solve these four quadratic equations. Okay, let's get the solutions. Let's begin with A, where we have X into X minus one equals zero. Now, here we are having two factors. We have X times X minus one equals zero. This is what I told you already. This means that maybe X alone equals zero or x minus one equals zero. That's when we can be able to get zero. To make this clear, it's like I have got x alone, then times x minus one 
x minus 1 is equal to 0. Do you understand that? So this means that this x can be 0, such that I get 0 times x minus 1 to get 0. All x minus 1 can be 0 to multiply it by x in order to get zero. So this means that, uh, this means that, x, this x is equal to zero. All x minus one, is equal to zero. So x already is zero and x minus one, it means that I will have x, I will take this minus one to go this side, then I have x is equal to one. So it means that the value of x is that x equals zero, all x equals one. Do you understand that? Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Let's have part B. In part B, we have got two X into X plus one equals zero. So this means that two X equals zero or X plus one equals zero. So if X equals zero, then it means that X equals zero, we can divide on both sides by two, and we have x equals zero divided by two, which is zero. So x equals zero. All we have x plus one equals zero. So we will take one to go this side and we have x equals negative one. Understood? Okay, so let's have part C. We have got X minus two into X plus three equals zero. Now, it implies that either X minus two equals zero, all x plus three equals zero. And then if we have x minus two equals zero, it implies that minus two will come this side and we have x equals two. Or if we have x plus three equals zero, plus three will go this side and we have X equals minus three. So it implies that X equals two or X equals negative three. For part B, it means that X equals zero or X equals negative one. I hope that is okay. So we will have part D. So for part D, we have got two X minus three. 
minus three into three x plus five. And it is equal to zero. So this means that either two x minus three is equal to zero or three x plus five equals zero. So if we have two x minus three equals zero, it implies that minus three will go this side to have two x equals three. And then we divide on both sides by two. And then we have x equals three out of two. Three out of two is the same as when we divide three by two, we get one remainder one. So it means that we have one and one out of two. So if we say that three X plus five equals zero, then uh, it means that we will take plus five to go this side. Then we will have three X equals negative five. And we divide on both sides by three, and then x is equal to negative five out of three. If we divide five by three, we will get one remainder two. So it means that x equals to negative one and two out of three. So that means that x is equal to one, and a half, all x is equal to negative one and two out of three. Have you understood that? Yes. Okay. Now let us have another example. Let us have example number two. Okay, solve each of the following equations. Solve each of the following equations. Okay, for part A, let us have two x squared plus six x equals zero. Then for part B, let us have three x squared minus 15 x equals zero. Part C, let's have a squared plus 9a equals 0. OK. These are the three equations that we are going to solve. So let's right away begin with part A. For part A, we have got two X squared plus six X equals zero. Now, 
for this one, we can first of all factorize it. And we can factorize this using common factor. We learned about factorizing polynomials in Matayum 2. So if I have got 2x squared plus 6x equals 0, I need to look for a common factor that I can divide by 2x. And again, I divide it by 3x. And you can see that the common factor of 2 and 3, sorry, of 2 and 6 will be 2. And since I have x here and x here, so it will be 2x. So this means that I will have 2x. I open brackets. Now, to get 2x squared, it means that I must get 2x times x. So that's why I will say 2x into x, such that 2x times x is the same as 2x squared. Then plus, in order to get 6x, I get 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Now, if I get 2x times 3, I will get 6x. If I get 2x times 3, I'll get 6x. And then we say that this is equal to 0. So now, this one is the same as this one. So if I get 2x times x, I get 2x squared. If I get 2x times 3, I get 6x. So that's how it is. Now that we have finished factorizing it, we can go ahead to solve it by getting the value of x. So this means that either 2x is equal to 0 or x plus 3 is equal to 0. And then if 2x is equal to 0, it means that x is equal to zero because we will divide by two on both sides and we remain with x equals zero divided by two, which is zero. If we say that x plus three equals zero, then it implies that you will take plus three to go this side and we will have x equals minus three. So it implies that x equals 0 or x equals negative 3. Is that OK? Do you understand? Yes. Bam, do you understand? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, uh, let's have part B. In part B, we have got 3x squared minus 15 equals 0. Now, also, we need to find out what is the common factor. You can see in part A, we had 2x squared plus 6x equals 0. And the common factor is 2x because I can divide 2x squared by 2x and I can divide 6x by 2x. So what is the common factor here? What do you think is the common factor, Salanya? 
Yes? What should be the common factor of 3x and 15? Sorry, we have this as 15x. What should be the common factor? Anyone can try? Yes? Ari Rack, can you try? Okay. If you have. Uh huh. Tell me, Ari Rack. 3x. Yes, 3x. That's very good. 3x will be our common factor. So then. We are going to have 3x we are going to have 3x into x so that 3x times x we can get 3x squared minus what who can tell me zero part what can we write 3x into x minus, how do we get 15x? Yes, Sir Rapat. Who can try? Five. Very good. Five. This is because 3x times five we will get 15x. So then we say that this is equal to zero. So this means that 3x is equal to zero, all x minus five is equal to zero. So if 3x is equal to zero, like we have seen already, 2x equal to zero, it means that we divide on both sides by three, and then x is equal to zero. And if x minus five equals zero, what is x? Who can tell me? Yes? If x minus five equals zero, what is x? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so if x minus 5 equals 0, what is x? It means that this minus 5 will go this side, and then we will have x as 5. Is that OK? So this means okay. that this means that x is equal to zero, or x is equal to five. All right. So let's go to part C. In part C, we have got a squared plus 9a equals zero. Okay, so how can we factorize that? What is the common factor? Yes, what is the common factor? Anyone? Here the common factor is A because I have A here and I also have A here. So it means that I have got A into A. A into A will give us A squared. 
plus nine. A times nine is nine A. Then we say that this is equal to zero. Then it means that A is equal to zero all a plus nine is equal to zero, okay? So already we can see that A is equal to zero. So if we have A plus nine equals zero, what is A? Yes? Zero part, what is A? Anyone to answer? Arirat, what is A? Okay, so nine will go this side to have A equals minus nine. So it means that A equals zero all a equals negative nine. Okay. So this is how we can solve quadratic equations using factorization. Now we only have about 10 minutes remaining for this lesson. I'm going to stop here and give you this time to copy the notes to your, to your yellow book. Then on Tuesday next week, we will continue to look at more quadratic equations and how we can solve them using factorization. Thank you and have a good day.